Well, today's topic we're going to be discussing is love. And uh, with us, I know love can be very difficult, it can be very confusing, but rest assured we have someone in the studio that's going to help us out. She is a love consultant, a dating coach, as well as an aphrodisiac expert. Please help me welcome Joy Nordenstrom. Hi, Joy. How are you? Hi, Christina. That's Thanks. a whole lot of things. Oh, yeah. Lots of love going on. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Well, we're going to be talking a little bit about some things you have coming up here that we can actually attend to learn more about love. Um, it's called Love Rituals, Archetypes, Chemistry, and Passion for Women Only. It's a three-part class series. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I'm, I'm so excited about this. It's um, There's three parts. The first one is called The You Within. Mm -hmm. So we're really going to be diving into the archetype of Aphrodite. And this helps you in, in such a stressful time that we're living in with all the challenges and how much work uh, women are doing out in the workforce. That transition time to becoming central, to becoming connected with herself again is really critical. And the first class will address this. So the series goes on to the you revealed and the you experience. Okay, now you're saying that um, women, when they come home from work, so it's hard to go from the, oh my God, I have to hurry up, I have to get this in, I have to get the kids, I have to bring them to soccer, I have to come home, and now I'm sexy. Yes. So the transition is difficult for women. Yes, even if they don't have a family, just being able to stop the story, stop the drama of what's going on, how they're figuring out, how they're processing things. Women, we have a lot more white matter in our brain, so we use both sides of our hemisphere of our brain much more. We rapidly go back and forth, mm -hmm. and guys have much more gray matter, so they're a lot more single focused. They use one side of the brain or the other and really have a hard time multitasking as women do. Mm -hmm. So when that comes to the transition time, as being in the workforce, we're going to have a lot more testosterone in our system. We're going to have more adrenaline. We're going to be really running high on our adrenals. So having the time to transition and to re kind of connect to that um, part of you that's feminine, sensual, that's filling up your own love cup takes a little bit of extra time for us to stop the drama and stop the story. So we have some really fun exercises and ways of connecting with all five senses to get you fully engaged and being able to quickly make that transition. Um, can you give us one right now that we could do maybe perhaps in the studio to get in touch with our femininity? <laughs> um, one of them is the sense of smell. So what we're going to do is try a bunch of different smells out because smell is the, the ability to be able to jog a memory with all of the emotions involved. That's the sense of smell. It's one of the most powerful senses that we have. Mm -hmm. So if we come in and we have a particular scent of a rose candle that we light, or we have a cup of tea that has a particular scent, maybe it's rose, maybe it's jasmine, something that we can consistently do to go, this is where I'm breaking the work mode, and we're mm -hmm. going into the sensual, the connection with self, the centering, the grounding, the being creative. And if you can jog your mind and your energy with a scent, that's just really powerful. That's so, um, are, men, are you listening? I mean, that might be a nice way for your husband or a significant other or someone to kind of help you get in the mood a little bit after work is if he realizes that scent does have and plays, plays an important part for you to get back into your sexuality and that, that he may have like candles all over the house <laughs> when you get home in hopes that maybe, you know. That's one of the things that I direct my clients to do all the time is when you either get into a new relationship or if you've been in one and you haven't done this before is mm -hmm. make a ritual around finding a scent that's connected to your sensual side it, and burn it or if it's incense if it's a candle if it's baking something if it's a particular room spray whatever it is have that going consistently when you're going to make love and if you get home before if it's a gentleman gets home before his wife and he starts burning that you know, incense or <laughs> lighting something as soon as she walks in she doesn't have to mentally like go through cognitively what's going on. Mm -hmm. She gets that scent, she gets in the mood, she's aroused and she can, it'll rev her up a lot quicker. Wow. <laughs> I can hear men taking notes all over San Francisco right now. Um, does this work with men as well? Are men as uh, in, uh, getting, you know, in gear and on board if they have a certain scent or with men it's just kind of just mention it and they're okay you know just come on let's go sure why not no men also need transition time they just handle a little a little bit differently mm -hmm. i think it's best if you guys 
you transition and you're really, really focused on the analytics, the problem solving, you know, you're using the left side of your brain. Mm -hmm. And when you come into your home, if you haven't taken some time to go exercise or just go and do some meditating in your car or go for a walk, you need the wife or the girlfriend or whoever's at home needs to understand that they really need this transition time in order to shift to that creative, emotive, um, right side of the brain. So just leave them alone for a little while. Don't bombard them with a bunch of questions. Don't get a bunch of, you know, things in their face that they need to do right away, but take time to really, um, let them have their time. So I, I think it's actually best if the guy gets home first or he takes that period of time before he gets home. Mm -hmm. And then if the candle's lit, yes. Um, the sense of smell is incredibly powerful for both men and women. And like I said, it, it's the one sense that you have that is all the emotions come back with that flood of that memory of mm -hmm. what happened. So it's not just you remember it as a picture, but you remember how you felt at that moment and what it's, you know, it stirs everything up in you. So I wonder what is your scent? <laughs> what is the scent that I'm trying to remember mine? I think it's chocolate, maybe chocolate. Chocolate's the good. The smell of chocolate or maybe and berries. Eating, eating chocolate is good too. Oh, as, as an aphrodisiac. Yes. Um, <laughs> what qualities are it in, are in chocolate that really, is there an actual uh, chemical or something in chocolate that triggers yes. that response? You have phenylethylalamine, P-E-A. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Wait, okay, don't try to spell that one. It's a great Scrabble world. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So what is it called? Phenylethylalamine. Wow. And they also call it PEA. Thank God. So, yes. Okay. Yes. And theobromine. So it's like an adrenaline, um, a little bit of caffeine like substance in there. So you get this rush of energy when you consume it. And it also is phenylethylamine is the same thing that you feel as the love molecule when you mm -hmm. fall in love. So you get a little bit of sweaty palms or flushed cheeks and, you know, your heart races a little bit. That's very cool. Now, we, we're talking a lot about smell, but there are other things that trigger and other classes that go on from there in the three-part series. Uh, what would the next step be? The second class is called the You Revealed. So it's about being able to connect to your Aphrodite, your sensual self, and then go out into the world holding on to that and, and not being afraid or, you know, what would somebody think if I'm dressing a little bit provocative or, you know, I'm going to be fully happy, connected with myself in the present moment mm -hmm. and looking at people with a, this air of, of love and acceptance and gratitude and connection. So I'll be raising their body chemistry and my own. And I went to Mills College. Um, I had the pleasure of being able to go through all my undergraduate and graduate years around women. And we have this ability at Mills to connect with other women and want to raise them up. Mm -hmm. And when you go out into the world, all of the media, everything that's kind of bombarded at us makes women want to compete with one another. So the second class is really about not seeing other women as somebody to compete against, but to see the beauty in them and to then have that self reflected back at you. And then the third class is called You Experienced. So this is you in partnership. This is you in relationship with other people. It's how the dynamics work. And so again, we're gonna be talking about the chemistry between men and women mm -hmm. and how that plays into the archetypes that we're playing out in the world as a woman. So the Sensual Symposium, it all ends with the Sensual Symposium, and what is that? Oh, I'm so excited about this. Um, it's going to be January 14th. It's one month before Valentine's Day. Oh, good timing. And yes, it is a boot camp for Valentine's Day. So this is where you come to get your, kind of get all revved up, think of all the wonderful details, get some new ideas. The first hour is going to be um, segmented with a bunch of teachers. Um, we're going to be shuffling into different classrooms um, throughout the Payne Mansion, this gorgeous, gorgeous mansion on, um, it's on Sutter, just mm -hmm. above Franklin. It's a 18th century mansion. And so we're going to divide it into little classrooms in the beginning. And so you'll just have some incredible teachers that are going to be coming. My co-host, um, Lona from Lolo's Boudoir yes. is going to be teaching. Uh -huh. I've got Jerry from My Boudoir. We have an incredible perfumer. We've got a couple people who do just really high-end chocolates. We've got Crystal from Bliss.com. Um, we've got Jimmy Jane coming. A whole host of um, people, and we're going to have a really great alcohol sponsor, hopefully champagne. We're crossing our fingers on which one. And it's just going to be a really fun time to learn, to, to find different things that you can do, just to think outside the box and be really creative for this Valentine's Day. Now, for the symposium, do you need to 
come with someone or can you come by yourself in order to learn how to be a better lover and maybe meet somebody else that's there solo? Yes, singles and couples.